right. Welcome everyone to Fook Live episode two. Is your branding helping your business? My name is Matt. I'm going to be your host for today. And uh, just, to, just to wrap up or uh, say what, what, what we're going to talk about today, how it's going to go down is essentially we're going to talk about how your branding is helping your business for the first 20 to 30 second uh, minutes. And <laughs> <It'll be laughs> imagine, that, I hope. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine that would be uh, really short, uh, but bit. yeah, yeah. So first 20 to 30 minutes, we're going to talk about uh, all, all the fun stuff. And then we're going to go into a live Q and a right after, uh, right after that. So, um, we have some questions that were submitted in advance. So we're going to go over those and you'll see a box right below the video player there. Uh, please submit your questions and, uh, we'll be sure to answer them live. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to do a brief introduction of everyone, uh, of, at Fook communications. We have Tia Ku, the designer, we have Michael Wood, the photographer and videographer. Hello. We have Alex Wilson, the writer. And we have Matt Rovette. That's me. I'm the guy trying to figure out everything about branding. So last time uh, in episode one, we spoke about brand versus branding. We talked about how marketing is something that an audience should engage with, not be subjected to. Uh, good design listens and how branding can define how the world uh, perceives you. So today we're talking about uh, whether or not your uh, branding is helping your business. Um, so, so Alex, actually, can you tell me a bit more about how you can shape a brand? For sure. So I think, um, you know, before we dive into answering the, the question of whether to know, you know, how to know if your branding is helping you, um, I think uh, it's good just to kind of recap a little bit of what we touched on last time, um, which was, you know, kind of understanding the difference between brand and branding and what the role of marketing is in that. Um, so, yeah, we said this before, but, you know, the, the, the kind of the difference with brand and branding or, or creating a brand identity is that um, your brand is, is the experience that you give your audience in its totality. So that's, um, you know, it's what people feel when they interact with you. It's your reputation, it's your customer service, it's the quality of your products all combining to create a brand image and, and, and a brand experience. Um, your branding or creating a brand identity is, is a huge part of building a brand. It's not the only part, but it's a, a huge part of that because it takes that brand experience, it takes that brand, you know, the quality of your product, customer service, your reputation, and it packages it and it projects it to the world. It's the visual manifestation of the brand experience um, mm -hmm. combining, you know, writing, imagery, design um, to, to, to convey who you are. And that's why creating a brand identity is such a big part of creating a brand because it's about shaping that story and telling people, projecting that customer experience. Um, and then the role of marketing in that is, is you know, branding defines that, that, that visual identity, um, lays the foundations for every piece of marketing material that you produce. So, you know, creates all of the rules around your visual communication, ensuring total consistency every time you speak, both in language and, and, and visually. Um, so whatever the marketing piece, it starts and ends with, with that brand identity. So. Summary. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So um, could you recap like why we're talking about all of this? What is it we're chasing? And uh, like, what are the benefits of great branding? Um, yeah, for sure. So again, you know, just, just a, a quick, quick summary of kind of things that we, we touched on in episode one. So first of all, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it dry, it drives growth. That's, that's the, the kind of the end at the end of the day, that's, that's what it does. So first of all, two things, it, it helps get customers through the door and then it helps keep those customers. So how does it do those things? So it gets customers through the door because it helps you make a great first impression. If you put mm. care into how you communicate and care into how you present yourself, people respond to that. It inspires trust and confidence in the quality of your work. Um, it elevates how people see you and the assumptions that they make about you. And obviously the opposite is true. If you haven't put too much care into how you present yourself, um, you can actually have negative assumptions about you from the off without anyone knowing anything else about you other than how you look. Um, you know, that, that, that carefully considered image communicates trust, trustworthy, try that again, trustworthiness. Uh, it's, a, it's a long word, it's early-ish. Um, yeah, trustworthiness, legitimacy, uh, integrity, credibility, reputability, um, all very good things. You know, a, a carefully curated brand image projects these things um, and, and it, you know, if you're consistently and carefully communicating, it makes you easier to remember. So, um, you know, we all have a lot of stuff to remember in the day. We see a lot of marketing that we are subjected to, unfortunately. Um, so you want to give 
give something some you know give someone something they'll relate to positively and keep doing it earn their attention and then make sure that they remember you um so that's kind of how it gets people through the door customer retention um how does it do that we said this before it mm -hmm. creates this like single unified persona that people can associate all of their their positive experiences to and that then drives loyalty. So if you're consistent, if you have a consistent brand image, consistent brand identity, it creates this personality that people associate positivity with. Um, and then by talking and feeling the same, um, your, that consistency means that people start to feel like they know you. Um, you then build long-term relationships with people, which fosters trust and loyalty. Um, and you know, it's exactly the same as with people customers build relationships with with brands they feel like they know and they understand so if you communicate inconsistently it's hard for people to feel like they know you um so that's that's yeah that, that really like a kind of a quick summary of, of of the benefits there and um it's it's really something that we consider or it should be considered like absolutely crucial it's it's not a nice to have branding it's absolutely like it's the centerpiece to a marketing strategy and it, it drives growth so there you go Hey, I, I love that, Alex. I'd love to add on one more point. I think an easy way to think about branding is, is, you know, look at it as a cup, an empty vessel that people are going to pour their positive experiences, their positive associations in and, and add their own story into it. I think what's, you know, obviously we want to represent um, the company, but we also want to give an opportunity for people to put themselves into your company. And that's how you really drive that that sort of um you know immortal bond with with your customer yeah 100 uh what does good branding look like well there's a couple of characteristics that you know we like to think almost as like a, a checklist um that we go through so um you know point number one your brand obviously has to be representative um good branding represents your innovation and advantage of your uh, of your company it, it helps express your story, your purpose, in a way that is as individual as your product. Sorry, I think there's a truck rolling by. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the second point we, we like to, to think of is, is honesty and authenticity. Um, good branding is honest. We, we've all been in those situations where, where we've seen some uh, product being advertised, we buy it only to be let down by the actual experience. And so, the, the number one thing that we like to do is, is, is be as honest as possible. And, and, and that benefit, um, you know, is, is more than enough to go the distance. The, the third point that we like to, to, to measure is, is keeping it clear, simple, and purposeful. Um, clarity makes you understandable. People should just get it. Um, if, if it really works, it will click. Um, there's, you don't need to say much else other than that and, and overcomplicating the sort of presentation of your brand, um, you know, it will cause you to blend in with everything else out there. So, right. you know, we feel that clarity is the strongest way forward in order to, um, really get your name farther than everyone else does. The, the yeah. next point that we so just to, sorry just to jump in there too, if, 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 sure. if there's people that want to kind of, that want a really great example of clarity, look at hinge. Um, the, the way they deliver their message, the dating app designed to be deleted. It's so simple. It's so clear. And it's, it's a really beautiful brand promise um, and just really well communicated. It highlights that clarity point really well, I think. Sorry. Sorry. And to... No, it, it, and it gets right to the point of why those people are on there. You know, they're not on right. there to stay on there. They're on there so that they never have to come back, you know? So that, that's a great example of, of how to say it's such a complex emotion in, in a and very honesty. short it's way. And honesty, it's that honesty. It's weirdly honest, you know, yeah. saying yeah. Like, you're, 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 we're here so you get rid of us. Like that honesty, it really strikes a chord with people. Exactly, and that's how you know that company is genuinely looking out for their customers when they put them before themselves. Um, the next point is long lasting. Um, of course, we want our companies and brands to be here for the long run. We, we, we aren't interested in you know, get rich quick schemes. Um, we're, we aren't interested in building identities or, or um, branding off of trends. Um, your brand should be as good as it is today as it will be in 10 years. Um, a great example is, is Coca-Cola. Um, you know, the Coca-Cola Red has never changed pretty much since they've introduced mm -hmm. it. And, and of course, like, how could we imagine Coca-Cola being any other color, you know? And the, you kind of, and, you see a lot of like, sorry to, <laughs> but <laughs> no, you see please. like, with, with, it's obviously, it's kind of, I guess, an obvious example, just because it's such a huge company and, and, but it's just, it's just a good illustration. But, you know, like you don't, you look at that logo and you don't think it needs modernizing. It, it's classic mm. and, and 
timeless at the same time. You know, it, it's, it's, you see a lot of brands updating because they need to, because they start to look dated. That's because it wasn't done right in the first place. Coca-Cola has this timelessness to it. You don't look at that and think, oh, it's an old typeface. Like they need to kind of give that a lick of paint. It's just continuously beautiful. And, and that exactly builds into the last point is consistency. You know, like that is the ultimate strength of, of a brand is, is being consistent. Um, you know, we, we all feel the Coca-Cola Red is obvious. It's obvious because it's, they've been doing it for years and, and it almost feels like as if it should always be that way. And, and that's the type of emotion. If it's obvious, it, it, you know, it's probably a sign that it's working. Could you imagine if they just changed it to that Pepsi blue? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, that, would, that, would, that, would, that, would, that would change what yeah. we'd say about coca-cola for sure that's right it wouldn't be used right. as an example anymore <laughs> no, no. Uh, but but um how do you actually know that uh or if your branding is working like yeah um if i could take a crack at this one um you know i think it you know it can be hard to to really evaluate but you know if you if you're gonna try and you know you know, look at it, look at it yourself and kind of try to do this yourself. You know, it really starts with, you know, just an honest assessment of your business and how you communicate, you know, assessing brand or branding is harder than marketing. You know, marketing can have um, KPIs, you know, you can, you can do, you can run ads and see how many people came to your website. You know, you can post things on Instagram and you can see how many likes and how many people viewed it. And so there's numbers involved with that. Uh, you know, it's kind of, it's difficult to say how many views or likes you get that are related to the strength of your brand. Um, you know, it's like, it's hard to tie it directly to something like ad spend. Right. Um, you know, brand metrics are a little more intangible. Um, there, there isn't exactly, uh, you know, an equation where it's, you know, I spend this much money and I get exactly this in return. You know, you have to kind of look at it a little bit differently than you might do with, with digital marketing as an example. Um, but from some obvious questions you can use to look at, at your to look at your branding yourself. I mean, the first question you can really ask yourself, it's kind of obvious, you know, have you invested in this before with your time or with your money? You know, if you if you threw mm. up a website when you opened opened your business and haven't looked at it since, something might be wrong. You know, you, you need to make sure you're updating this stuff and you need to make sure that you're making making it aligned with what you do. Um, the second thing you can do is is, you know, take a look at your core message. Are you differentiating yourself? You know, right. do you have an onlyness statement? You know, this is, this work is related directly to your brand, not your branding. So there is a difference, but it's, it's really difficult to have successful branding. If you don't know what your brand is, you know, if you, if I put you on the spot and I say, what do you do? Who do you help? You know, why, why do they choose you? If you can't answer that question kind of naturally, you know, there's, a, there's probably a high chance that your branding is going to be confused because your branding is looking to the brand, you know, for that, that direction. It's looking for the, it's looking for the brand to be that guide. We can, and use, we can use Hinge again here. It's like what, what, what Hinge have done so well is they, what, what's their brand promise? Mm. We're here for you to delete us and everything flows from that. And exactly. That's, that's exactly. kind of, you need to work out what, it, what is it that we have that no one else does. Exactly. It's your purpose. It's, it's your why. You got to yes. know your why, right? Exactly. Okay. You, you can't build good branding without that. You know, it's just not possible. But, you know, if we assume you're looking at yourself and you feel that your brand, you know, you figured that part out, the next thing to do is to look at your branding itself. You know, is your branding built to represent you? Does it consider your story and your purpose and what you do? So essentially we're just saying, is your branding mm -hmm. connected to your brand? Is that relationship there? Because your brand is trying to flow out your branding in a way, if you get what I'm saying. So you really want to make sure those are connected. So those are some of the questions you can ask yourself. And then finally, you just want to make sure that, you know, are you communicating consistently, you know, through all your marketing touch mm -hmm. points, through the branding, you know, is your approach the same every time? Is your message focused? You know, is the colors you're using, you know, the typeface, your, your design approach, is it the same every time? because that consistency is very key. Because if you put out a message last week that's, you know, looks one way, you know, says one thing, and then the next week you put out a message that looks different and is saying something different, essentially your customer, they're gonna see two messages and now you're asking them to do the work to figure out what you do and why you help them. And generally that's a bad place to be. 
You know what I mean? You want this to be easy and effortless for your customer. So, you know, that, you know, if you're feeling like you're not consistent, definitely that's another w- way you can find out if your branding is working or not working. And, you know, the thing, the thing, you know, th- those, those are really great. Those questions are really great starting points. You know, like those questions alone, very quick impression that you'll get, they might be enough to tell you that, okay, my branding needs a bit more love, you know, like that, mm-hmm. that might be enough by itself, but you know, may- maybe, you know, let's say you need a bit more convincing, um, you, you, in, you know, in that case, as Michael said, the intangibles, it's, it's harder to track ad spend to brand value. You know, it's hard to say my branding and generated X amount, but there are, there are obviously ways that you can, you can sense the strength of your brand and whether it's helping you. Um, and there's some, there's some really great ways to do this. And, 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 you know, we said at the top, Michael repeated there that your, your, your branding, your brand identity is a huge driver of the strength of your brand. Um, so once you understand the strength of your brand in general, it gives a very clear idea of whether your brand identity is telling the story and projecting the right experience. So one, one kind of uh, qu- pretty quick survey, it doesn't take too much time, it's called a net promoter score survey. Um, and, and the good thing about these is that they're very easy to do. They can, you know, you don't have to ask thousands of people, although it's great if you can, the more people you can ask, but um, you need, you know, only three to five questions in this. And you start with a very simple one. We've all received this, the email. We've all heard this question before. On a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to recommend us to friends, family, and your network? Um, right. When you get those scores back, anywhere from zero to six are your detractors, eight to nine, your passives, nine and 10 are your promoters. They're the people that love you. So, you know, they're your Apple fans up there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we said um, you weren't going to mention Apple, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I threw it out the window 15 minutes then. Um, uh, so yeah, you, you then you add those up, you add up the number of your promoters, you take away the number of detractors and that's your net promoter score. Um, and anything above zero means you have more loyal customers than not, which is positive. It's not exceptional just to be above zero, but it's the right way, you know, the right direction. Anything above 20 is, uh, is good. Um, anything above 50 is, is fantastic. And 80 is like world beating, you know, you're, you're, you're killing it. Um, and what this score does is it, it shows you, you know, it gives you an impression of customer loyalty. How loyal are they to your brand? And again, important to clarify, it's loyalty to your brand. Branding being a part of that, a very important part, but branding being a part of right. the loyalty to your brand. The great thing that you can then do with this score is you then support it with, with other questions. So you, you get that general score and then you drive deeper into what is it that's making this score happen? Why does a customer feel a certain way about you? Um, and, and so what you then do is you, you dive deeper into those customer interactions and everywhere where your customer is, is, is interacting with you. So, you know, you can then ask questions directly about your appearance, you know, about a particular marketing touch point. So you can ask, you know, it, it, you know, what, do you, what, do you, what was your first impression of us? Like how, you know, how, what was the website experience? And if you're starting to get feedback as a, you know, off the back of your NPS score that, um, your appearance is off putting the website was difficult to use you know the 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 you know some some of your messaging was confusing this can indicate very very strongly that your branding needs work your core brand identity isn't doing a good enough job of communicating your value and and giving people clarity and and making people want to engage with you um, you know, I think uh, it, 50% of, of, of people will leave a website if it's aesthetically not pleasing straight away without clicking anything. And so, you know, th- these kinds of these kinds of things are important, like your presentation is very important. Um, so, you know, if you're starting to get this feedback, you know, appearance could be improved, etc. You then you get an idea, your brand needs work, you need to communicate your value. And also you need to give people an identity to actually be loyal to. You know, if you're if you haven't got that many loyal customers, you need to ask. You know, or, you know, you, you've got a, a low NPS score. Maybe you need to ask yourself. You know, am I giving them a brand to be loyal to? Have I created a brand identity for them to be loyal to? Um, and that unified brand identity, as we said at the top, it gives a, a a simple route to build a relationship with you and and associate their positive experiences with you. And and that drives loyalty. And if you're not driving loyalty, that could, it could be the case that, that they, you're not projecting that experience, that persona for them to feel positive about and feel loyal towards. Um, and then, you know, th- these, these kinds of surveys, you, if you keep doing them over time, then you get an image of whether your investments into these touch points, into your branding is working. Um, and as I say, it can be very quick, quick one to 10 rating, three to five questions after that, delving deeper into the, the touch points that people are, are interacting with. Um, and, 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 you know, you're good to go, but, um, 
I think it's it's worth just setting the expectation that this isn't like a quick fix. It's not like you, you know, you, you see your brand identity, you invest in that, and then next week it's off the off the scales in, in terms of customer loyalty. It's it's a it's a long game. Branding is always a long game. Um, you need to establish that identity and then build on it and then measure it over time. It's it's literally uh, building that relationship by doing a survey like that. You are building your relationship with your customers and mm. establishing that communication with them uh, and honest communication. Yeah, and you know, it's not it's us. not perfect. You know, it's that's that's yeah. that's the thing. that's the thing as well. It's not it's not a perfect thing. It, it just it just gives it a clearer idea if you, if you're if you're looking for kind of proof, I guess. Yeah, totally. And I think uh, you know another another way to measure the strength of your brand. Um, you know, another tool that we could talk about is the brand commitment scale uh, using the brand commitment survey survey by Marty Neumeyer. Now we actually have a slide for this because we pre-planned it. Um, so Matt, if you want to <laughs> get the slide up so we can kind of show people what the scale is. This, is. this is the brand commitment scale. It's also known as the brand ladder. Um, the beauty of this scale is that it puts the emphasis on the customer. And it's a simple tool for measuring the progress of a brand from customer satisfaction at the bottom to customer empowerment at the top. We have four stages on the ladder, satisfaction, delight, engagement, and empowerment. And we are trying to uh, map our customers on this uh, scale using the brand commitment survey. So we have, we have the scale and then we have a survey and that's how we kind of measure people against the scale. So the brand commitment survey is an easy to use survey that yields um, a number, it gets you a score, a single number from 20 all the way up to 100. Um, the score represents your overall progress um, up the brand ladder, where empowerment is given four times the way to satisfaction. And so what I mean by that <clears throat> is a survey has eight statements and customers rate those statements from one to five. And each step on the ladder has two statements related to them. So, you know, a question related to satisfaction is like, um, does the company, you know, does the product meet my expectations? Now this, this question weighs the least, um, you know, it's not, it's not considered a question that uh, is very important in the scale of brand. You know, any customer or any company can provide a, a product that satisfies your expectation. And this is why it kind of, it weighs the least and that's why it's kind of um, related to satisfaction. And then questions like empowerment, you know, a question related to empowerment would be, um, would I be very sorry if the business or if the business or if they went out of business, if the company went out of business, you know, would you be sorry if they went out of business? Now this, this type of question. went yeah. out of business, what would <laughs> exactly. you do if you have an iPhone, right? Michael exactly. Would, if Mike would melt down. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so this, this question has a lot more weight onto it. And on the scale, you actually take the rating from one to five and you multiply it by four. And this is to illustrate that it, it's an important question because if Apple goes out of business or someone like me, that really sucks. I really don't want them to go out of business. And that, you know, that would start to tell you that I'm kind of high up on the ladder. So if you get like a thousand customers, if you have that, you know, you need, you need a, a pretty good sample size to get an accurate reading. But, you know, if you can get the survey out there to some customers, you can essentially generate a heat map over the ladder. And every survey score is acting as a data point. And so if customers are scoring high for questions related to satisfaction and delight, but they're scoring lower for questions uh, on engagement and empowerment, you know, your overall survey score will, will be lower. The heat map will show that it's kind of positioning itself lower on the ladder. And so that's kind of why, you know, this is why the scale is oriented as a ladder because you have to, you can't just score high on empowerment. You know, people don't just enter and they feel empowered, but they're not satisfied. You know, you have to build people up. Customers have to score high on satisfaction to score high on delight. They have to score high on delight to score high on engagement. You build it up. You can't just say, we're empowering people, but they hate our product. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You know, this, this is a simple right. survey um, attached to logic. It's just, it's very logical. And, um, uh, sorry, oops, you, 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 you go ahead, you go ahead. Oh, okay, so I'll just, you know, just to kind of close out the power of the survey, I just wanted to give an example of how you could use it and so, you know, if I took the example of you walking out of this, this Fook Live, you've got some great points about how to understand and check to see if your branding's working. So what you could do, hypothetically, is you could take the brand commitment 
uh, survey, which is focused on your brand, but you could put out the survey and kind of see where you're ranking on the scale. And then you could say, okay, I'm going to invest in my branding. You know, I'm going to really make sure it's, it's clear and it, it's working for me. It's doing the best it can do. And then, you know, in a, in a year's time and half a year's time, you put the survey out again. And hopefully what you're going to see is that on this heat map, on the brand scale that you're moving up, customers are, you know, they're moving up from satisfied to delighted or they're delighted to, to engage or engage to empower. And that's how you can kind of use it to really evaluate if something like branding is working. Right. And a great, again, a great illustration of how we, what we mean when we say these are more intangible, you know, these aren't, these aren't like this, you know, you look in six months and this survey is going to say, well done, you generated a hundred thousand dollars because of your brand. But it's, right. it's, it's, it's much more qualitative than quantitative. You know, it, it gives yeah. you qualitative feedback and, yeah. and, and that, that then will inform a brand strategy. Absolutely. And, you know, if anyone wants the scale or the survey, please email us. You can Google it. It's very easy to find on Google, but we can also, we're happy to send. Great book send to recommend as well if, if, if anyone. If yeah, you if you want to read it, the, the Brand Flip by Marty Neumeier, he also covers it in detail in his book. So definitely a great read. Definitely helps you to get a grasp on, on brand and measuring it and stuff like that. What I like about it is that uh, it's like a flow, right? It's not, it's, as you said, qualitative, not quantitative, because it's not a one and done measurement. It's, it's a constant measurement of what's going on with your brand yeah. and branding. Um, so let's say you've discovered that your brand branding might not be that strong. Uh, what can you do? Well, it, it, you know, it really depends on, on where your level of, of investment is. So, you know, do you have a budget? If not, do you have time? So if you don't have a budget and you have the time, um, there are a few easy things that you can do to, to position yourself um, to, to grow from here. So one of the things is, is, again, establish your key messaging, exactly like the Hinge example, figure out what is the kind of core promise that you're trying to um, convey and, and service to your customers and mm -hmm. build out um, a guide, a, a way to kind of express that um, in your messaging. Keep it simple, keep it clear. It costs nothing to work out your value proposition and, and obviously being you know, the owner of, of your business, you know it. Um, figure out what your message is and, and how to say it simply. And then the, the next thing that you can do is, is trying to define some of those core elements of, of uh, brand identity. Um, and we, we put those as the logo, the typography or the font and the color. These sort of three elements make up uh, the majority of, of how your branding is expressed. Um, and if you can use those elements consistently, you, you're, you're that much one step closer to, to having an identity that is going to um, bring value to your business. Um, and then the next thing from there, um, once you've sort of figured that out, is to, to, to find out what what are your largest touch points? Um, if you're an e-commerce business, a website is, is absolutely a, a key uh, touch point um, that is going to bring you the most value. It's where your customers know you the best. And so spend the time to work on those elements and then roadmap out to the, some of the smaller elements, um, depending on what, on what your business is. So that, that's what, you know, our recommendation for, for people who are starting out um, and, and don't necessarily have the budget to um, invest into it that way. So if you do have a budget um, and you don't have the time, um, you can talk to us, work with someone who, who will tick off all of the <laughs> characteristics that we mentioned earlier. Um, you know, branding is, is one of those things where if you do it right, it lasts forever. It is one of the smartest investments you can do early on into your business that will continue to give you value um, at all stages of, of your growth. Um, and you know, if you, if, if, if you don't do this, you know, you're going to miss out on, on a lot of benefits. You're going to miss out on the ability to boost your credibility. Um, you're going to miss out on the opportunity to build relationships, um, establishing legitimacy, especially for small businesses who don't have the luxury of, of you know, larger corporations. Um, and it makes a great first impression. And again, all of these sort of elements all touch into different points that a customer might enter, you know, whether they're coming back um, or they're seeing you for the first time, branding touches on all aspects of those. And so um, that's sort of, you know, the value of, of why you should invest into it, whether you have the time to, or if you have the budget to.
and it, you yeah. know whether, whether you you know time you know if you have to budget or you don't have to budget it's the, the improving the branding all comes back to telling your story just you know making sure that, that your brand is inspired you know, your branding is inspired by your purpose it distinguishes you and and, and it makes you understandable you know you, you, you've got to kind of keep those things in mind um, communicate with simplicity clarity and purpose and and, and do that consistently um, I think there is it is it is important to note and this is there's a great quote from uh, Burton Kramer Canadian designer tier yeah, he Canadian designed designer. the original CBC logo right. and probably many of the things the Canadians have seen. Many, in. many great things. And, and he yeah. said something. So the thing with simplicity, you know, is that simplicity is not inherently good. So just because something is simple or you're communicating simply doesn't mean that it's great. Um, his quote was that less is not more, but less must be more. So if you're communicating oh. simply, you have to get those elements right. You know, they have to be purposeful. Um, so, so that's something to bear in mind is simple is not necessarily good in and of itself. There needs to be a purpose behind the simplicity. And, and what I like about this is that when we were talking about flow of up the ladder, um, yeah. you know, touching back onto why this is important to continue to do this, it's not just about flow, it's about growth. If you're not growing, if you're not changing, you're probably stunted. And mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately to say, it, uh, you know, to be frank, and um, in, in storytelling, uh, you, people like movies because you see a character grow, go from one place to another. You see that character grow. And yeah. that's what emotionally attaches uh, an audience to uh, a character. So uh, with, with that being said, you know, should I invest in branding? <laughs> uh, wow. it would be weird it'd be weird if we got to this point and uh, <laughs> said no don't, don't bother um so, yeah sum I, up, I no. <laughs> what's that the producer is telling me to, to ask this question <laughs> um and yeah i think we're, we're at 30 minutes but I, this is kind of let me just let me just summarize a little, very quickly and, and and we'll move on to questions i hope we're not you know, taking taking more time than, than people were giving us um but you know if, if branding isn't something that you've seriously considered um now is the time the earlier you do this as tia says the, 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 the more you'll, you'll reap the benefits, you know, the earlier that you're driving customer loyalty and customer retention and the earlier you're, you're building long-term relationships, the quicker those things start to pay off, you know, and, and, and the, the longer that you're making great first impressions, the more people you're making great first impressions to. Um, and, and so, yes, you, you need to start focusing on it. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're answering no to those kind of self-assessment questions that, that, that Michael mentioned, um, mm -hmm. the likelihood is your branding isn't doing you any favors and you're missing out on, the, on those benefits. Um, you know, if you have a little, if you have time to do, to do a little more research, if you need a little more convincing and you, you find low NPS scores, uh, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're not doing too well on the, on the brand commitment ladder, the, the brand ladder. Um, and you know you're maybe delving deeper into that and you're getting feedback about your appearance your, your your website some confusion the quality of marketing touch points you know whether that's social media websites print whichever then most likely yeah your, your brand needs work um and and, and if you if you establish that you, you kind of you accept that that branding is something you're gonna have to start start loving and, and start showing some some you know th throwing a lot of a lot of effort behind it's, it's kind of up to you to, to how you proceed from there. And, and, you know, going back to whether you do or don't have budget, if you, if you don't have, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you don't have the, the budget to, to, to pay someone, um, it doesn't cost anything to sit down and, and work out your brand onlyness. You know, what, what is it that only you do? What, why you over the, the, next, the next person? Um, building out that key messaging, that value proposition, and then creating a basic identity around that story. And, and, and keeping that that simple, you know, logo, typeface, color, define those and use them consistently. Don't don't start throwing in new typefaces or, or fonts. Don't start throwing in new colors. Um, but you know, if you if you do have you do have the budget, you know, maybe you're 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 a little bit further down the line in terms of growing as a as a business uh, or you're a small medium business, large business, whatever it might be, and you're looking to partner with someone. It's important to partner with the right people. You know, this this mm. it should be a great creative fit and a personal fit you know it, it's it's branding is often a deeply personal thing you often you often feel very deeply about the company that, that you're branding maybe you, you love working for them maybe it's your company and so you obviously have that attachment to it and so you need to you need to work with someone that understands that and works to understand it completely they need to love the brand as much as you do um you know that they the team or the, the freelancer the agency whatever you work with it, it should be a collaboration um 
and and there should be this back and forth this dialogue uh it's you know you, you don't want to go to an agency, give them a brief and they say, okay, thank you very much. We'll see you in a month. And we're going to give you a brand. You know, it should be, there should be discussion. There should be a deep understanding of the brand that you're creating. Um, so you want to kind of look for that, that kind of fit with whoever you, you might end up working with if you have the, the budget to work with someone else. Um, and you know, once, once you've made those investments, you've established that it's about measuring over time, you know, don't expect immediate return on investment. Don't expect these clear cut KPIs that says I spent X on marketing and because of my brand identity, I got Y in return. That's that's a very difficult equation when it comes to branding. So, you know, you need to work to understand and measure its impact by speaking to the people that matter. And, and, and that's that's customers and, and kind of keep measuring that over time to, to get a clear picture of of what that investment is getting you. I love it. I love it. Um, let's let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's go to some questions uh, that we got over here. So uh, Tasha uh, asks, what is your what is the best or your favorite way to track the value that your branding brings to a company? Um, I, I'll, I'll hop in. Um, and, you know, I think we, we kind of, kind of, we were touching on it there just at the end and, and the brand ladder that Michael ran through is, yeah. is, is a real, it's a great, it's a great one for us. Like we, we like how visceral it is, you know, it's, it's, it's not just a, a number. It, it actually gives you words to, to, describe what you're feeling towards a brand and that's what we really like it creates this very visceral painting of, mm -hmm. of what a brand is making people feel and, and therefore how powerful it is um but i think in the question it was branding and not brand so again just to kind of be careful with the very slight distinction there um it's it's uh you know it, once you start to understand the power of your brand it gives you a very clear idea on, on, on if your brand identity is is powerful or not um and you know, I think it is, it is, again, it's important to reiterate this idea that they are, it isn't, there's a lot of intangibles with brand. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just, yeah, as spending X getting Y in return, marketing KPIs is easier to measure, branding much more challenging. So um, to kind of illustrate how that might be the case, if you, you know, you've spent, I don't know, a few thousand dollars on a, on a lead generation campaign and it gets you X amount of leads, it's, you can then say this amount of money got me this amount of leads. What you can't then say is how many of those leads did you get because they liked your brand, because they felt something right. from your brand identity mm -hmm. that you have to ask. It's very difficult to, to track that as a number. Um, so we just got to keep that expectation set, I think, or, or managed that, that it's not, it's not super clear cut, but there are, there are great ways like the brand ladder to, to really get an insight into, into, into how, how well it's working, speaking to those customers and, um, and then yeah measuring that loyalty over time um but you know that there are there are actually from our personal experience there's 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 ways that we measure the success of brand that aren't necessarily those kinds of kpis and it's more qualitative feedback that we get so you know we've 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 created branding that that's elevated companies that you know client might have come to us and said you, they feel a bit like a mom and pop shop and they want to be taken a bit more seriously to a legitimate brand and they've gone on to franchise into other countries you know companies that they, they, you know, they, they offered a free service, rebranded them, packaged them, effectively communicated that they were shifting to a paid service. And they, we saw a great customer loyalty switch signing up to the paid version instead of loads of people fleeing because it's like, well, this isn't free anymore. And obviously we aren't saying that, thanks, this is all because of us. Like, obviously the quality of the product is fantastic, but the quality of the communication and the perception makes these kinds of things possible. And, and, and I think especially with that kind of moving from a free to a paid service, you, you, better, you better look like you're worth the money, you know? Um, I, I think it's, it's important to note that, you know, half, half the battle is, is creating something that people will want and the other half is making them want it. Nice. Uh, we got a question here from Mark. Uh, Tia, you touch on fonts and typography. Do specific fonts or color evoke certain emotions, good or bad, help or hinder? your brand example what if coke was yellow should a dating app use red to evoke love versus turquoise fantastic this is a, question Mark. Liz, nice this one. is this is like, tier all yeah. over <laughs> yeah. i mean i'm excited for the answer i feel like that that'll be its own episode <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> that's just that's just tia no one else is there just, yeah. this is not even that just, just sponsored tia's. by mark yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, you know, it's interesting to, to think about, you know, how type, um, how color relates to the emotion. And, and I think that's usually the go-to sort of um, 
uh, problem to tackle. And, and actually, what I love to actually think about first before thinking about the emotional aspect of it is, is remembering that this is a brand identity. This is how people identify you and recognize you. So, um, you know, should you use red, you know, because you want to evoke love? I, I like to think of it as in use a color so that people can remember you by that color. So that way, when the, the, the Coke truck, you know, drives by and you didn't quite see the whole thing, but you saw the red and you think that is Coke. Um, and, and, and all of a sudden you're thinking about Coke. It's a free ad. You don't have to necessarily go farther than that. Um, so we are I, sponsored I, by Coca-Cola, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or Hinge. Yeah, or Hinge. <laughs> You know, the, you know, think of it as an indicator first um, and then think about the emotional after. And, and in terms of the emotion, you know, my, my thing is, is steer clear away from stereotypes. So, you know, red love, you know, let's not worry about that. Let's worry about, you know, satisfying the memorable, memorableness of it first before satisfying the emotion. And I think what happens is, you know, companies that do that successfully define the emotion that the color is associated with. Um, we see red used everywhere. Coca-Cola, McDonald's, the government of Canada, a huge Cat. wide variety, Porsche, you know, a huge wide variety of, of different markets, of different prices. Um, yet, you know, you know there isn't just some kind of one emotion that ties them all together. And they use the color to define that emotion and they use the color so that you can identify them. And, I think, and that's, sorry, go on. I completely interrupted you. Sorry, but I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an important point that, you know, that, that kind of, it's, it's the association isn't, I should use red because it's the color of love. You need to use a color that identifies you. What, what colors are the ones that make sense to the story that you are telling? Um, and, you know, we also have to ask yourself if you're, you're dating app and you think let's use red for the color of love, you're then playing into a very visually stereotyped area. And are you distinguishing yourself by doing that kind of equation right. by saying red equals love, therefore red, yeah. then then you're not distinguishing yourself because then mm -hmm. you're basically playing a game that everyone could play. Everyone's red because they're in the dating app scene. You know, yeah. it's about what defines you, um, not not kind of stereotyped visuals that we've seen. So I got here, I'm a small business with no marketing team, et cetera. Uh, how do I do it by myself? It's a great question. That one's from Michael. And probably for Michael. <laughs> um, well, I think Michael to Michael. So if you, don't, if you don't have a marketing team, so if you're a small business, I understand. If you don't have a marketing team, I think it's just as we said before, if you don't have a budget, you have, you have the time, I think start with, with your brand you know make sure you can understand what you do who you're helping uh you know why they would choose you um if you cannot kind of answer those questions first you know everything else related to your branding and your marketing will be easier and when you get to the point that you might be able to involve someone to help you with it either hire people or partner up with people um that'll make you know everything easier. So if you have no marketing budget, I'd say start there because then when you start to, you know, turn your attention to doing maybe something creative, if you want to create your own branding yourself, you know, at least you'll have a really good foundation to begin with. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I just want to thank uh, our audience today. Really appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your day to be with us. I'm sorry uh, for overrunning guys. <laughs> oh yeah. We too wrapped up. Yeah. We got we, too passionate. We, we, we are very passionate about brand and branding. Um, so if you have any more questions uh, that uh, maybe you think about later on or, or um, that we didn't answer today, please feel free to reach out to us at create at fookcommunications.com. And uh, we're on Instagram at fookcom. And yeah, we're also on LinkedIn. We're everywhere. Uh, so uh, please feel free to take down our names if you don't have them already and send us an invite on LinkedIn. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to hear your feedback as well. So thank you. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. See ya. Cheers. <laughs> Bye everyone.